Hi, I'm Mike Troy, Editor-in-Chief of Retail Leader. I'm here with Kristen Howell, Global Retail Vice President at SAP. Uh, we're going to talk about digital trends influencing today's grocery consumer. Yes. So what are you seeing at SAP uh, in terms of trends? Sure. So thanks for taking the time today. Um, you know, we at SAP work with a number of grocers globally, um, certainly in my role. Uh, I'm able to see a lot of our retail and consumer goods customers. Uh, some of the trends that we're seeing, certainly from a digital transformation perspective, uh, have really started with the consumer. Mm -hmm. So many grocers today are looking at how they can innovate around their mobile apps, how they can use digital promotions, coupons, these types of very customer-facing vehicles. Um, I really see that as, as a key focus area today for many grocers uh, as they try to really compete with new entrants in their market. So, you know, certainly there are, you know, online players, subscription services that are out there. Sure. Uh, so from a grocery perspective, you know, the fundamentals of the business are really still the same. It's still about an efficient supply chain, high quality products. Uh, it's still a, a very low margin business in certain cases. So with a lot of digital influences and certainly digital native consumers, it really does put some pressure on grocers and consumer goods companies to understand how they can take advantage of these new digital platforms and mediums to continue to deliver high quality, high service, but still at a very, uh, very low margin and you know profitable for the enterprise. Yeah, that's interesting. You mentioned global right there at the start. You have that global perspective. Sure. Um, in a lot of ways, it's said that the U.S. is is behind a lot of other countries, especially yeah. Europe, when it comes to the digital, you know, area with food sure. retailing. Um, what, what's your take on that? Sure. So it's a it's a great question, and what I've seen globally, um, you know, other countries or other parts of the world maybe have adopted digital technologies faster than what you would see here in the U.S. Um, Australia is a great example where their digital infrastructure just has outpaced maybe hmm. uh, what you would see in you know Canada or the U.S. Australia, Australia yes. So they um, uh, have a pretty vast mobile network, very high rates of subscribers using you know phones and mobile devices. So you know when I look at other parts of the world, there's some great lessons to be learned about how to run an effective click and collect program, for example, how to use digital lockers to um, make the pickup and purchase and you know point of sale experience very digital as opposed to just you know swiping your card in the store. Okay. Um, really innovative things you can see certainly in Asia and Europe. Uh, you know pop up stores where you have a digital. Uh, imagine a digital shelf displayed yeah. almost like a movie as a projection on a wall where a consumer can walk by with their mobile device, create their shopping list for that evening's dinner pay via mobile phone and then drive by and pick it up or even have it delivered straight to their door. Sounds like we need to go to Australia and check out what we they're could. doing in Australia. It's definitely a good yeah. reason for a road trip. Uh, you know, kind of shifting gears a little bit, <clears throat> thinking about what's happening globally. How do, how do you see the U.S. retailers, supermarkets in particular, needing to transform and evolve? Sure. So we definitely see opportunities to take that digital transformation or take the lessons learned from the digital consumers and really bring them into the back office. So many you know, food retailers, uh, drug retailers, even CPG companies are now thinking about how can I start to take these digital technologies and make them innovations in my merchandising processes, in my assortment decisions, in my space decisions, uh, bring digital all the way through the supply chain. And what's really interesting is when you think about that through the lens of a traditional grocer supplier relationship, um, there's many new areas of opportunity where digital technology can really you know, shrink the time from you know, farm to the shelf, can really provide a lot of visibility through track and trace. So digital consumers many times value ingredients. They value the uh, organic nature perhaps of how that food came to the shelf. And so being able to provide visibility through the supply chain, or work with suppliers in new ways to bring fresher, more diverse products to the shelf will be key. That speaks to the, some of the topics I've talked to other people about, the whole notion of transparency and authenticity and personalization. All of those things get powered by data. Yes. I know you guys live in the data world. We do. And um, 
data transparency and accuracy is a huge issue to make all of these things happen, you know, to get to where we want to go or need Absolutely. to go. How, <clears throat> what's happening there? What are, you, what are you seeing there? Sure. So what's really interesting for me in the, in the food retailing business is that data is becoming more of an asset as opposed to uh, an expense or you know, a storage item. And so many food retailers are now finding that the, this data set that is growing and growing as you start to bring in you know, personal information, as you gain insights from your loyalty program, as you look beyond into social and the digital footprint of these new millennial consumers, you really can turn that data into an insight or an asset that you can use to drive your business. That's interesting. A data as an asset, maybe it doesn't necessarily show up on your balance sheet with a numerical value assigned to it, but it's huge. Exactly. And from an SAP perspective, we really see when you think of data as your asset and that insight as the key, you know, the critical driver of making more profitable uh, more profitable business decisions. Um, you know, SAP as a technology company really becomes the key. You need to unlock that asset and turn that data into a profit driving or margin building inside across the business. Okay, so let's end on this. I'm guessing these are the type of conversations you've been having with yep. retailers and CPG companies here at FMI. Absolutely. And everybody's trying to unlock that same puzzle. Sure. Yeah. Sure, and we think one of the key ways to do that, um, really, especially in the food retailing business, it will be imperative to start running your business with what we call a digital core. So for us, a digital core is a, a technology set that is integrated to suppliers, that's fully integrated to the workforce, that has clear visibility of inventory, that has a clear understanding of how to use this data as an asset and turn it into a personalized promotion or price or merchandising decision that can be used to really effectively satisfy these millennial consumers, but also compete with the the ever increasing yeah. and uh, changing, you know, digital set of it's, competitors who are in the food space. It's fascinating all the magic that has to happen behind sure. the scenes with data and, and product to deliver on that new customer, uh, customer expectation. Exactly, and um, the, the pace of change will only increase. Yeah. And so really we're seeing many food retailers start to embrace technology as a key driver of their innovation. All right, very good. Great. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, Kristen. Great to talk with you. Thanks.